Now to deliver the final keynote of the day, uh, we have with us uh, Mr. Ajit Balakrishnan, founder and CEO of Rediff.com. So he's also currently chairman of Government of India, Ministry of IT Committee on Internal Governance and Proliferation. Uh, and he'll be giving a keynote on entrepreneurial opportunities emerging from the network economy and prolifer proliferation of digital media. Mr. Ajit. You know, when we talk about what the information age is dealing the information age that you're dealing with, we often talk in terms of a... There's an echo? Can you put this off? Okay, now, uh, uh, we often, if you see the title below, it says media. Uh, for you know, for uh, some particular reason, I've always wondered about this from 1995. The internet is thought of, and the web is thought of in terms of media. Uh, actually, I'm going to demonstrate to you that it is purely accidental that the first application of information age technologies happened to be in the media area. And it, it's much more than that. And to to help focus on that, sometimes it takes, it's useful to see some period in history where somebody else had this kind of problem and saw it differently. Uh, so here is a case in point. Um, this is, looks very far away from today's topic, but trust me, it's relevant. Gandhiji came to India in 1917 from South Africa, you know this. Huh? And uh, he was completely unknown when he came here. Uh, the, the Indian National Congress was founded in a posh apartment in Malabar Hill in Bombay. Uh, like many, I live in Bombay, so you know, a few of us sit and think that we own the whole world, but really had no traction. It was by 1915, the Congress independence movement was going nowhere. Now, Gandhi appears from South Africa, a British trained lawyer, answers a call from help from peasants in Champaran in Bihar, uh, not far from here. Seven months later, he was a national leader. And from 1917 to the day he died, he was the undisputed leader of the Indian National Congress. And there's a story behind it. This is a story. Uh, as Hesi says in my experiments with truth, Champaran in Bihar was full of indigo plantation. But they had one problem. The tenants had to, by law, devote three parts out of 20 parts of the land to indigo. And he felt it was a very unfair system, so he was called to liberate the tenants. And the, behind that, the real issue was indigo was a very valuable piece. Uh, as recently as the 15th century in England, uh, only uh, people sanctioned by law could wear blue because blue was l the color of royalty. It was extremely expensive even if you could afford it and it is segregated. I mean today, Wall Street bankers wear blue and there are, you know, blue is the color of royalty. Now, what happened? What the Champaran agitation resulted in, in Gandhiji becoming a leader and we, what is behind it was in 1856, Perkin, uh, in, a, in, a, in a kind of innovation moment, uh, tried to synthesize quinine from coal tar, but got a purple-colored solution, which he found it to be very effective as a dye for textiles. It came as a side result of this experiment. Okay? Unknown to anyone, if you look back with the vantage of history, the synthetic chemical industry was born at that moment. Okay? Now, watch what happens. Uh, Indian exports were of indigo from Bihar and Bengal was 187,000 tons at a very, very large high price. 1856, Perkins synthesizes uh, effectively indigo, similar color. It took another 14 years where Bayer tried to synthesize it through a synthetic route in production quantity, no success. Another 10 years passed in Munich University that they do a lab scale synthesis, and, uh, they, but the price was too high, still not use it. 1882, by now I think what, 46 years or 36 years, uh, there's a new route which Bayer tries. 1890, the Zurich Polytechnic tries the synthesis, but too expensive. Finally, Bayer cracks it in 1897. Immediately, the Indian exports of thing by 1930 dropped to one tenth the volume, one tenth the volume, and the price devices by half. The Champaran agitation starts in 1917, and Gandhiji becomes a hero. Okay, now, 
if you hear, we, we were all taught the Champaran story as good kids, and I learned it myself in school. But nobody told us what is the big technological wave which is behind it. And today I'm going to demonstrate you some events of this time are going on here. Now watch this. Gandhiji declared victory. Okay, he said in his my experiments with fruit, uh, you know, the thin cut hair system in existence for a century was abolished. The superstition of stain of indigo that could never be washed out was exploded, and he went on to be a national leader. Uh, Champaran today um, is still the most poverty-stricken part of India. No changes happened after all this liberation. Look at what, look at from the span of history. Champaran and that event was about the chemical industrial revolution, which was going on in Europe at that time. Okay? Uh, the effort was to synthesize quinine, which is a very valuable natural origin drug from South America. Uh, the synthesis of quinine uh, and of indigo led to a knowledge about chemical processes. It led to the insight about the benzene bond. Okay? So the analysis of the benzene bond liberated the field of synthetic chemistry. <clears throat> One of the direct results was <clears throat> cheap fertilizers. After this period, there was no worldwide food famine of any scale because of <clears throat> fertilizers with cheap. But this is one of many, many revolutions, including the one that we are now looking for. Now, I'm presenting the historical context, but then it's easier to understand. Because when you, it's so hard to see when your face is that close to the wall. What is the origin? I think the origin of this whole thing was uh, in the textile industrial revolution. But nonetheless, look at the German trajectory after the indigo synthesis. You hear companies like Agfa, BASF, and Bayer, the A in it stands for aniline. They were all the original innovators. Aniline is in anil for, in Arabic, uh, is nil in Hindi. The origin of these companies is embedded inside the names even today. You know what happened? After that, the red azo dye was also nil, found to kill streptococci, bacteria in mice. The active ingredient, sulfur anilamide, creates a pharmaceutical industry. So by then, the Germans now owned it. And we were, we were rejoicing about independence. We were rejoicing about the Champaran peasants being liberated. So that was the end result. So when sometimes technological revolutions happen, it is difficult to see what is going on. See, what are the technological ways of what they did? The first was the textiles and steam revolution, which created affordable cloth. You can see that at this end. Then came steel rails, and this you know from your high school and college histories. National, international markets were accessible because of steel, rail, and ships. The chemistry revolution created affordable chemicals. The electric, auto, and pharmaceutical revolution created affordable transport, petrochemicals. The first computer revolution created large-scale organizations. The first big application was the airline booking system, if you remember. It enabled large organizations, large stock markets, it's just scale, industrial era uh, organizations can now become 20,000 people, 30,000 people. Finally, the information age, now this is it. Uh, you know, it came in media first, affordable media, which everyone's crying about. Why is it free? Uh, such debates must have happened in the 18th century when they said, yeah, my beautiful handloom, uh, you know, thing, why is it suddenly so cheap? You know, they are anti national pre producing all this. Gandhiji even made it an uh, emblem. He put the charka into the middle of the Indian independence flag. And you see the irony of the whole thing looking back. Soon, uh, uh, Another revolutionary would arrive in India with the same Congress flag, but put inside that, what will he put? I don't know. He'll put a fountain pen or something like that, uh, harking back to an era of, you know, things life is simpler. Uh, my central proposition is the information age has now come uh, for media first. It will now drive its way through education, healthcare, and the delivery of justice, and to build decentralized organizations. No longer do you need, will you need vertically structured organizations. That's uh, substance of this thing. Now, uh, the Industrial Revolution in two pictures, since many of you left school long ago, uh, what it did was enabled, with the use of machines, individual human beings to do much more. Okay? Now, there's an equivalent effort which is going on today, a miracle going on in the information age. And what is that? I think machine learning is the case. Hmm? This is a spinning jenny. This little gadget to the right of you is called a spinning jenny. Initially, I think the first invention created maybe six spindles. Over time, it went up to thousands of spindles. One person could drive. The 
current revolution, the information era revolution is being driven by machine learning. That if there is nothing you remember of today's speech, just remember this one piece, machine learning is the key. For example, expensive radiologists are needed to detect a colonic polyp. It's a long process, training, many years of training. Uh, here there's an example from the Siemens lab in the United States, a machine learning system. You feed in that data, it, can, it finds spots it in 96% of the time, the cost of a few paise. So just as the expensive spinner and the master weaver was put out of a job, radiologists will soon lose their jobs. And that is the power of this. And conversely, conversely, it will make medical care affordable by all, which is a mega crisis, not just in the United States, but even bigger crisis in India. In India today, if you are a person, like a typical Indian, earning five to 7,000 rupees a month, if you fall ill and you want this kind of test to be done, you go broke tomorrow. You're dependent on your employers, largest to do it. We want to make it super cheap. So think what are the really big opportunities, the really big opportunities, which is a, are not going to be in media. In my humble opinion, it is over. The media experimentation is over. You'd see falling click-through rates. I heard the, you know, I'm part of the same industry, so I see it every day, falling, uh, uh, you know, methods of privacy uh, and so on and so forth. I think uh, this is one example. Another example, uh, to detect breast cancer. Okay, again, you need expensive doctors. You have to fly them to the Bombay Tata Cancer Research Hospital and so on. A nice linear classifier. And trust me, this is the same algorithm that Rediff.com uses to recommend news to you. More news or new, more related news, this is the same algorithm. So separating out what is real and what's not, okay? This, again, is another example of machine learning. You need large amounts of data, you train them. A third example, I think um, this institution should know more than anyone else, that insider trading, if somebody goes and taps, you get arrested. Now, that is an old economy method. It's an old economy method. Today, uh, in El most countries in the world, the way to detect insider trading is luckily, if you have a warrant to record some, or over, overhear somebody's conversation, luckily you may hear something and you get caught. That is not the way. The current method, and uh, I know this is being done in the United States, I am Calcutta, has a very large experiment going on with the finance ministry to look at trading patterns. And some trading patterns declare insider trading. This is a far more elegant and a far more reliable way. There are some estimates that as most of 30% of all Bombay Stock Exchange trades are insider trades, as much as 30%. Uh, if it probably is even more, I think. So I think this project is to use machine learning to